Hi everyone and welcome back to our Christmas special. If you don't know what this is all about, up in the run up to Christmas I released a game that I quickly made in Unreal Engine 4 and I've done a series, and this is episode 6 of it, showcasing how to actually make this game. I've given you all the assets so just follow along and you can remake the same game I did. So previously we got it set up with our main character here, Santa, who can throw snowballs and pick up these candy canes that are around the level. Okay. So what we're going to start doing in this episode and the next couple of episodes is start working on our characters and NPCs. So I'm going to start things off by looking at the presents. So the idea of the game, the objective of the game, is to collect all the presents inside the level. And the present is something like this. Okay. Now I've rigged it with uh, special animations and they're all provided for you, so just import them all in. So I've got uh, an idol. Let's uh, get a good view of that. So it sort of moves like that. And I've also got another idol, like a, a second one. Let's give it some life and some cartoony behavior. And here I've got a walk animation for it. Okay. And once you've imported those all in, from the folder, you uh, will have what you see here. Um, I'll just put mine into folders to keep things organized, but there we have it. Okay, so on the present, we're going to create a moving actor that's got some basic AI that will look at, move around uh, for the character to chase down and collect. So let's get started with this task. So the first thing we'll do is set up the character. I'm going to go add new blueprint class and choose character. And this is going to be called present. And we're going to open it up. Now on the mesh, we're going to choose our present walking mesh. And we're just going to position that like so quickly. And we just need to rotate it. I think it's this way to rotate. We want to rotate it. And make sure that the bottom of the box is at the bottom of that capsule there, like so. And if you want to change the capsule height, you can do. It's not a big deal. Totally fine. With the mesh still selected, we're going to change its collision so it doesn't have any. So on collision presets, we're going to change that to overlap all. And click compile. So once that's done, we can close that and come back to that later on. So what we're going to do is add animations to this character. So we're going to go to the animation folder here. And we're going to create a new animation blueprint. We're going to choose the correct skeleton, so we're going to use the uh, present walking skeleton and click OK. And let's rename that one present underscore anim and open it up. So fortunately, this is quite a basic animation on this character um, as it's just a present that just has a walking animation. So we want to have a look at the anim graph and start setting up that graph here. So for that, I'm just going to, um, it's only got one thing, it's either idle or it's uh, walking. So what we're going to be doing is doing a blend space that will go between the two. Now because I've got two idles and one walking, I want it to randomly choose which idle it's going to play. So the way we're going to do that is create a blend space that is two directional. Animation, blend space. We're going to choose the correct skeleton and we're going to call this one present walk underscore bs for blend space double click that to open it up so a two directional two directional um sorry two dimensional uh blend space has two axes so up and down left and right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put idle one at zero zero idle two at the one at top here and i'll do walking over here on the right hand side in both corners Let's change the axes now. So I'm going to change the vertical axis first. And the vertical axis is going to be the idle um, options option. And it's going to go from zero to one. Okay. And we don't need any subdivisions, we just call it one dot subdivision. The horizontal axis is going to be the character's speed. And we're going to leave that going from zero to 100. And you can leave it as four if you like, it doesn't really matter. But what the way it will work is um, we take to randomly choose an option for the y-axis. So it will choose one idle animation before it goes into 
the walking. So we click save on that and close that down. So let's return back to our present animation graph. And we'll drag now our present walk blend space from our list in the asset browser over and drop it in. And let's plug that into our result. So the speed is going to be a variable that we can apply here. So let's create a new variable and call it speed. And that'll be a float. And we'll drag and plug that into our speed. The idle option, we're going to create another one. The idle option will also be a float because it requires it to be one here. And we're going to drag that over like so. But it's important to note that idle option can only be zero or one in order to have an effect on this. Click compile. And now let's work out how we work out these two variables. So go over to your event graph. And in here, we see the event blueprint update animation and the try get pawn owner. So from the return value from the try get pawn owner, we're going to drag this out and look for is valid. And you want the one with the question mark. Click that up to your event node. So if it is valid, what we want to do is get the velocity of its movement component. So drag out from the return value, get movement component. And then from that, we want to get this velocity. Velocity, as we mentioned with the center, gets you direction and speed. So to get the speed, we have to get the length of that vector. So get, or not get, sorry, just to vector length. And that value is the speed of our character. So we can drag speed out and choose set and connect it up like so. So that's all we're going to do on our graph here. Uh, we'll set the idle option somewhere else. So click compile and we can close this. Find your actor. And we want to apply the animation graph to our mesh. So change the anim class to your present anim. And hit compile. And you see the idle animation playing in the viewport, like so. OK, so the next job is to make it move around and randomly choose which idle it's going to play. Let's first of all just get it moving. So the first way, sorry, the first thing we're going to do is on begin play, we're going to set its origin location and store that value to be used for later purpose. So I'm going to create a new variable and you're going to call it origin and we'll make it a variable type of vector and hit compile. With that, on the begin play, we want to right click and get the vector, uh, get the, sorry, get the actor location. And we're going to set that origin like so to that location. So what we're doing now is we're storing the starting point of our, of our present. Now the reason why we're doing that is because I want it to hop around in its local area and not go drifting off elsewhere in the level. So it stays in the sort of same relative location, but it just hops around its original point. So to do that, we need to store its original point. On begin, on, after begin play, we're going to create another event. And this one's going to be a custom event. And this custom event is going to be um, move. And this move uh, event is going to trigger the movement of our character. So with this, we're going to come out of here and do AI move to. Now the pawn we need to set to is itself. So we can drag out and do self. And its destination is going to come from a function. And the function is a random uh, point in navigable radius. So get random point in navigable radius. Plug that into your destination. So this will look for a random uh, position in the world. The origin is going to be our origin here. And the radius is how far away is it going to look for a point from this origin. So I'm going to put in uh, 500. So I'll look for 500 units as a radius around it. Okay. On success, we're going to pause the, uh, not only delay it, but also set the idle in our anim instance. So we're going to do a cast to present. Anim, because when we get the anim instance of the mesh, 
which gets us to the animation blueprint, essentially. Uh, it doesn't know which one it is. See, it just says anim instance object. It doesn't tell us which one. So this will now cast it to a particular one. And because now I have that on there, I can set the idle option. And here I can do a uh, random float. Oops, sorry. Actually, not track from there. Let's get a random int first of all. So we go random int in range and do zero and one. And simply just drag the return value into your float there to convert it into a float. So this random int range will choose a zero or one and it will now convert into a float and onto our present animation graph. After that, we're going to set it to delay. And the delay is going to be, uh, let's do uh, two seconds, I guess. Yeah, do two seconds. And once it's finished, we can set it to move again. So it's basically, it's essentially a loop. It just keeps calling itself after two seconds. Okay. Compile that and let's put that into the game and see where we're at. So place this person into the world. And we also need to place our nav mesh volume. So go to volumes and look for the nav mesh bounds volume. And this thing wants to cover the whole entire map. So increase its size to cover the whole map. And if you if you hit P on your keyboard, you'll see the nav mesh all highlighted in green. Okay. I'll hide it again with P. And if I push play, we'll see where we're at. So it's not currently moving, and I guess I know why. Yep, it's because on begin play, I did not tell it to move, so it's to tell it to move. Right, let's do that again. So it's a bit too fast. That's no problem, we can fix that. But there you see the other idle animation coming into play there. So let's just tweak its movement. So I'm going to character movement and change its max speed for walking down from 600 to 300 first of all. Let's see what that looks like. That's not too bad. Okay, and there's our present. So the idea is, is that Santa will be able to walk through him and collect that present up for our game. Excellent. And he won't ever go any further away from his original point. So he won't have to worry about him getting lost in the level for the player. They'll always be roughly in the same place, which is what we want. And that's it for this episode. In this episode, we've made our present uh, character, which is the object of the game, is to find all the presents in the level. Now, next time, we'll be working on our enemy characters, the goblins, who are after the presents and there to stop Hat Santa from saving Christmas. So join us next episode where we start working on our enemies, uh, which are a bit more involved, have a lot more animations and a lot more interesting AI stuff going on in there. So thanks very much and I'll see you all next time. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons. I wouldn't be doing this without you guys and I can't uh, thank you enough for all the support you've shown me in 2019. Here's to 2020 going forwards and all the exciting things yet to come. So thank you once again. If you want to watch the next episode of this series and the rest of the series, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley and you, just one dollar donation will give you access to this whole entire series all in one go. So once again, massive thank you to everyone who supported me. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys. Other than that, Merry Christmas and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.